Welcome back. Another protest in the streets of New York. This is Manhattan. As we watch more protests and angry demonstrations across the nation, we must remember South Florida has seen its share of racial violence. It is an ugly chapter of our history. Many would probably like to forget. And Calvin has more now from the newsroom. Right. Well, the new documentary is called When Liberty Burns, and it takes us back to the painful time. National Guard troops on the streets of Miami, nearly 200 dead, $100 million in property damage. All 40 years ago in 1980, the documentary's young producer helps you understand why the so-called McDuffie riots were years in the making. Injustice! Injustice! When Liberty Burns takes you back to perhaps Miami's worst moment. In its darkness, the documentary takes you by the hand, guided by the timeless words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society, which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. In the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. For three straight days in May of 1980, Miami's Liberty City, Overtown, and Brownsville neighborhoods burned Not following the acquittal of Not eight Dade me. County Public Safety Officers for the savage beating death of 33-year-old Arthur Lee McDuffie, an ex-Marine and insurance agent. The most severe wound is the one which is between his eyes, fractured his skull, and literally destroyed his brain. Dudley Alexis produced a documentary. It wasn't one death. It's so many things that was happening in the city of Miami that caused everything to explode all at once. Alexis lays out in his documentary with old news clips, the road to Miami's 1980 riots. From the 1950s building of Interstate 95, right through Overtown, displacing dozens of black residents and destroying livelihoods. Their beautiful homes they had completely destroyed the Old Town community for the most part because the houses were gone, you know, I-95 coming right down 3rd Avenue. In the late 1970s, the Larry Shockley case, a Hialeah police officer who shot and killed a 21-year-old black man. The grand jury yesterday said there was not enough evidence to indict Shockley, and that decision has outraged black community leaders. Then a white state trooper receives only probation for molesting a 10-year-old black girl in the backseat of his patrol car, the wronghouse drug raid on a black school teacher, and the guilty verdict for grand theft of Johnny Jones. Many of his black supporters felt the charismatic Dade County School Superintendent had been targeted. And so the police beating death of McDuffie, the cover-up, and the acquittal would be the tipping point. Injustice! I don't think much has changed because, you know, we, we look at today, you know, we're, we're still fighting the same thing. It is a powerful documentary. It premiered at the Miami Film Festival, has already won awards. An online screening is set for June 19th, that is next Friday. It Louis does look, Christine. boy, it does look powerful. Yeah. And so why did this young man want to produce this documentary? Well, five years ago on September of 2015, uh, his high school friend, uh, Junior Prosper, an unarmed cab driver, was shot and killed by Miami-Dade police officer Anthony Martin. And there are conflicting stories of exactly what happened. Prosper's family says that he posed no threat at all, but the cop's attorney says that Prosper bit the officer's finger, and so he had no choice but to shoot. So this case sparked Dudley into looking into police and race relations in Miami and of course the number one issue that most people talk about when you talk about race relations and police in Miami the McDuffie riots. All right.